the Mazda MX-5 Miata. In a world where you can't get away from crossovers and SUVs, electric cars are the latest talk of the town and where sports cars just seem to keep getting more and more expensive. The Miata continues to be one car that will give you all the driving thrills that you can ever want at an affordable price. Not to mention this car just puts you in such a good mood. It's so simple and so fun and it's always smiling at you. My name is Omar and this is the 2022 Mazda MX-5 Miata. A truck going by and another truck going by and another truck going by. anyone out there that really makes fun of Miata owners, you really don't know what you're missing. Go out there and actually drive one and then come back and comment on this video and let me know how you feel then. And believe me, I get it. By the looks of it, you might see a Miata owner on the road and think to yourself, what was that person actually thinking? That thing looks so small, so tiny, and so impractical. But those are all the reasons why the Miata is so awesome. The small and tiny size of this thing makes it extremely fun to drive. You could just toss this thing around all day long. The simplicity of it makes it affordable and lets you focus on the actual drive. And yeah, it's impractical and that's great because kids in the backseat cause accidents and accidents in the backseat cause kids. It isn't perfect, no, but it will let you have fun while keeping your daily life uncomplicated and that's what makes the Miata so appealing. So appealing that over 10,400 people bought one last year. And that may not be a lot, but I'll tell you this much, those 10,400 people are enjoying the hell out of their daily drive. You've got a 181 horsepower four-cylinder engine in the front, power goes to the back, you have a six-speed manual transmission, you can put the top down, a perfect formula for pure enjoyment. And I know what you're thinking, just 181 horsepower. Yes, I never said it was the quickest sports car you can buy. This isn't made for drag strip runs, this is made for twisty roads and some open air fun. And don't worry, the aftermarket tuning world can help you if you want more power. All right, so what's new for the Miata for 2022 and should you consider buying one? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of this tiny little Mazda and then I'll give you my opinion whether or not if you should buy one. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit that red button that says subscribe. It's just as simple as driving this car. All right, let's go do this. All right, before we get into everything else, let's talk pricing so you know what you're working with as we go along. To get into the Miata, you're looking at a starting price tag of $27,650. Your next option is to jump up to the Grand Touring for $32,650 because the club has been sold out. If you go to Mazda's website, you'll see it right there in bold letters that the club is no longer available, which kind of sucks because the club gave you a bunch of upgrades over the Sport, most importantly the Bilstein suspension and the limited slip diff. That said, if you want those two things now, you'll have to go for the Grand Touring. Also, if you don't know how to drive a manual, you probably should steer clear of the Miata because that's where more than half the fun is. But just in case you do want to get a Miata with an automatic transmission, you can only get that on the Grand Touring. All right, let's get into everything that's new for 2022. Well, it's just only two things and only one of them has to do with performance. No, you don't have more power and that's okay because for a vehicle weighing just 2,341 pounds, this engine does just fine. The only performance upgrade you get is something called kinematic posture control, and no, it has nothing to do with your posture to help you sit up straight. What this basically does is while you're going through a corner, the KPC system applies a slight brake input to the inner rear wheel, which helps with cutting back body roll. The other big upgrade for 2022 is that you now have wireless Apple CarPlay. Big plus for some people out there, I personally don't care for wireless Apple CarPlay. I like to plug in my phone and take the time while I'm driving to charge it up. Now, other than that, the 2022 Miata is pretty much the same. I gotta say, I always thought this interior was a bit tight, and don't get me wrong, it is, but after spending a week with this thing, it's really not that bad and you get used to the space in here. That said, one interesting thing that you might not have known about the Miata is that the seats actually don't have any back cushion in them, and of course, they've done that to save weight. But does that make the seats uncomfortable? Not at all. The leather or the fabric seats, depending on which trim you go for, is tight enough to just hold you up and it's surprisingly really comfortable. Now, the other cool thing about the seats is that if you go for the Grand Touring with the Bose sound system, you'll have speakers in the headrest. And when you're on a call using Bluetooth, those are the only speakers that are in use. By the way, if you want heated seats, you'll have to go for the Grand Touring. Oh, and you also have one zone climate control, which yeah, makes sense. You obviously don't need dual zone climate control in here. 
Of course, the Miata is one of the quickest and easiest convertibles to use out there when it comes to dropping the top. To bring the top down, you just unlatch this latch right here and just pull it back and lock it into place. Now, when you want to bring it back up, you just pull this latch right here and simply pull it close. It's that simple. Other than that, this interior is very simple and I personally enjoyed that this week. I've been driving a ton of cars with a bunch of tech, so it was nice to just be in a very simple interior that isn't too complicated. For example, since Mazda had to make use of every area in this interior, your cup holders are detachable. You can move them away from back here and plug them right here in the front on the passenger side. The infotainment isn't anything crazy. This is still Mazda's old system and it's nothing fancy. There's no fancy graphics or anything like that. It's still got the old navigation system. So you'll most likely live in Apple CarPlay, which again is wireless now. But yeah, if I got the Miata, I would just use Google Maps or Waze in Apple CarPlay instead of the native navigation system. Honestly, Mazda can just put Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in here and call it a day. They don't even need an infotainment. But yeah, that's really it. The gauge cluster is analog, nothing too crazy or customizable, just the info you need, and it's pretty straightforward. Driver assist tech-wise, it's pretty simple here. You have blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, smart city braking, and lane departure warning, and you have a rear view camera, and that's it. By the way, you don't have a glove box where you would expect it. It's actually right back here and it's lockable. So if you want to leave the top down and walk away and leave your valuables locked up in here, you can. That's pretty nice. Now, one thing I will say that this interior for some reason feels a little bit better built to me than the ones you get on the GR86 or the Subaru BRZ. I'm sure some might disagree, but that's just my opinion. All right, looks wise, nothing has changed. It looks pretty awesome and pretty Kodo. I originally thought that I would go for the RF hardtop over this because the soft top can get a little noisy on the highway, but after spending a week with this one, I'd much rather have this. It just feels more fun and more simple. As standard, you get LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. Look at these tiny little eyes. This is the cutest car ever. You also have a simple set of LED taillights in the back, and then you have 17 inch wheels, which look okay. They're nothing that crazy. Color-wise, if you go for the Grand Touring, you have four choices to pick from, including this Soul Red Metallic, which is my personal favorite, and then you have Machine Gray, Snowflake White Pearl, and Jet Black. But yeah, overall, I like how the design of the Miata has aged. It still looks really cool and keeps its overall tiny stature. It isn't getting bigger and bigger like every other sports car out there. Let me know what you think about the looks in the comments below. All right, so before I give you my final thoughts on the Mazda Miata MX-5, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'd love to show all of you. You have two cup holders, one right there, one right there, and again, they are detachable. Here are the keys to the Miata, just like other Mazda keys, the buttons are on the side. Door close sound from the outside, and the inside, solid. Charging game-wise, you have two USB-A ports, and that's it. Let's do a quick indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Not bad. Now for the horn sound. Not bad. I'd say solid. I'm impressed. So every time I get to spend a week with a Miata, I really start looking forward to it. This car is just so exciting to drive, and I'm sure Miata owners will agree with me, but I feel like this just makes you a better driver. The transmission, the six-speed manual here, is just so easy to shift through. It is very, very easy to drive. And of course, the Miata's driving dynamics are just outstanding. This thing handles like it's on rails. You could just throw this thing around all day and have a crap load of fun. Nothing feels this way, really. If you want to push your driving skills to the limit without pissing yourself, this is the car to do it in. And that's because the Miata doesn't punish you for messing up. It'll straight up let you know, hey, relax, you're not good at doing this, or I'm not capable of handling this without any computers yelling at you or the car itself. It just takes it and you can get better with it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did find myself wishing for a little bit more power, but I also found myself thinking, what would I do with that extra power? I would probably put myself in a very difficult situation. This will do zero to 60 in like six or 6.3 seconds, so you're not gonna get anywhere quicker, but the fact that this is so nimble and so light, you'll just have a lot of fun getting to wherever it is that you're going. It weighs 2,400 pounds, which makes it really light, and that's great because you can make it dance in the corners. And whatever you've heard about the Miata's handling is absolutely true. The near 50-50 perfect weight distribution of this thing just lets you throw this thing into corners. And the steering feel isn't extremely heavy, it's actually pretty light, but the way this thing grips on the road, it's just great. I absolutely love it. That said, there is no denying that this thing is impractical. It's small, it's cramped, it's noisy. 
If you're looking for something affordable and comfortable, but still a little sporty, try the Honda Civic Si, where you have an actual trunk where you can put things. Speaking of the Civic Si, how does this stack up against the competition? Well, the Civic Si isn't really a direct competitor to this. It's more of a option to consider in this price segment. This competes with the likes of the Subaru BRZ and the Toyota GR86, both of which are very fun sports cars that have very similar driving dynamics to what you have here. And you know what? You don't have to go for a brand new Miata. You can pick one of these up used and they're still very affordable. I don't know where I just ended up, but there's some big mansions here. I just turned down the street. I was going down some back roads. These houses are huge. Like you could probably buy like 200 Miatas with the price of the house, probably even more. Now I know most people buy a Miata for their weekend car or their track car. They don't buy it as a daily driver because of the not so practical nature of it. But if you do buy this as a daily car, you will really enjoy it. Honestly, I've just been driving around back roads in my neighborhood and I've discovered areas that I've never seen here before. And it's really beautiful out here. For example, I've discovered there's a lot of rich people over here. These houses are just freaking massive. The only thing I would say is that if you get the Miata, make sure you go for the Grand Touring because that's where you get the limited slip differential and you're going to need that to have this fun. But that will also set you back around $32,000 and that's where the Subaru BRZ and the GR86 get a little bit more appealing. You get more power and they also come standard with the limited slip diff. But you can't put the top down in those two and have some open air fun. This car just becomes a part of you. It's like an extension of you on the road. Wow, that was deep. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. And I'm sorry if this was too noisy, but I had to do this review with the top down. It's just, it's only right that I do this with the top down. Thank you, Miata, for making me realize how poor I am and how I don't live on the rich side of town. I just want to walk up to their house and knock and be like Daniel Mack and ask them, what do you do for a living? And they'll probably answer me something like, we don't drive a Miata, we drive a Mercedes SLK or a Mercedes SL or a BMW Z4 or a Bentley Continental GT convertible. Well, you're not having as much as fun as I am having, as I am having in this Miata, just throwing around in your neighborhood. When I get a little older and bored, all I need is a Miata and some back roads to keep me happy. I'd wake up every morning and make sure after the kids get on their school buses and just uh, drive around all day.